Well, hey guys, what's up? Just me and Totoro here with a little um, coffee and I've got some of that. Um, I'm trying the Lion's Mane Elixir today from the Four Sigmatics and it, like the Chaga Elixir, is also really nice and creamy. But it's super hot out right now. Actually, I have the AC on like full blast to try and auto regulate a little bit. But we're getting a torrential rainfall. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. So between that and the heat, it's it's like it's like a rainforest in Houston. It's very humid. As you can tell from the title and thumbnail, I've been getting many questions if I could talk about heat rash. Um, particularly this time of the year when it's hot. I know many of you watch me from like the Philippines and many tropical climates and you are, you are battling heat rash. You've asked me to speak about it. So today I'm gonna to talk all about heat rash. Heat rash, the medical name for heat rash is actually miliaria, not milia, miliaria. <laughs> but miliaria is a very common skin disorder. It's a type of rash that is due to occlusion and blockage of the sweat duct, the eccrine sweat duct. So not the oil gland, <clears throat> not our sebaceous gland, nothing to do with acne. Our, our sweat duct, what, um, what uh, puts out the perspiration when we're sweating. Sometimes that can become plugged up um, just like a plugged up pore, but a little different. It can become plugged up and the sweat can't get out. And the result is trapped sweat and an itchy bump. And depending on where in the level of the skin that the sweat is trapped, the bump can have a variety of different appearances and uh, different manifestations. Miliaria is incredibly common. It's very common in tropical environments, as I alluded to. It's also very common in newborns and in hospitalized individuals, particularly people who are bed bound or on their back all day in bed. It's also very common in athletes working out in hot, humid climates. Some athletes like to work out in um, gyms where they lift weights and it's really sweaty and, and uh, there's not good air circulation. That's another common setting in which miliaria will arise. And the cause in, in newborns, the cause is due to the fact that their little sweat ducts are immature and they haven't quite quite got all of the all of the all of the mechanisms in place for perspiration. It's also due to intense physical exercise, can be brought about in the setting of a fever when your body is trying to cool itself by producing more eccrine sweat. And it's also very common and, and caused by occlusion of the skin with uh, very tight fabric. So in a neonate, for example, in, in a newborn, not only are their little sweat ducts immature, but they're often swaddled, and so they can become a little overheated and their sweat ducts can plug up. Um, and then with prolonged bed rest, you have your, the skin on the back is not, is not breathing, not being exposed to air, the sweat ducts get occluded, and that can result in a heat rash or miliaria. And then the other um, common setting, in addition to hot, humid climates, is just um, working out wearing um, some synthetic tight fabrics, like a lot of athlete leisure, leggings, um, tight clothing that doesn't allow um, good sweat wicking, can really predispose to, to development of heat rash. There are actually three different types of heat rashes or miliaria. And the type of heat rash that an individual gets is the result of where in the level of the skin that the sweat duct is blocked. So in, in neonates, for example, one of the more common types of miliaria or heat rash is something called miliaria crystallina in which the little um, sweat duct is blocked very superficially at the top layer of the skin. And the resultant appearance of the heat rash um, are these tiny one to two millimeter, very, very superficial, fragile little uh, water filled blisters. They almost look like little sweat droplets. They're very fragile and rupture easily. So sometimes they go undetected. Um, and they have no associated inflammation with them. They're just kind of um, bland appearing. Like I said, they look like little sweat droplets. 
Miliaria crystallina, the superficial type of heat rash, is most common in neonates. About 9% of neonates within the first week of life will have this rash. So I know many of you are um, expectant mothers that watch my channel and um, expectant dads and families. So um, that is something that can occur in the neonate. But miliary crystallina, or the more superficial type of heat rash that's, that's more common in neonates, it tends to not be symptomatic and tends to resolve with, with minimal intervention. And I'll get to that in a little bit. Then the other type of miliaria is probably the one that's most common, particularly in adults, is miliaria rubra. Um, rubra meaning red. Miliary of rubra is when there is blockage a little bit deeper, still in the epidermis, but a little bit deeper in the skin, and it causes the, the sweat duct to not only be blocked, not be able to, to pump out sweat properly, but also to become inflamed. And the result is a, a slightly bigger bump, a two to four millimeter bump that is red and is very, very itchy. This is probably the heat rash that the majority of you verbalize in the comments that you you have you you are battling with. Very common. Um, about 30% of adults who move to tropical climates will experience miliaria rubra, um, and most commonly happens like on the trunk, on the body, <clears throat> in um, skin folds, under the under the breasts in women, in, in the ab abdominal folds, under the armpits. Very common areas for miliaria. Uh, rubra to arise. They're incredibly itchy um, and they, you may think that it's acne or, or, or zits, but you'll notice it goes away pretty, pretty quickly within a few days of avoiding that scenario, but they are very, com very, very itchy. Um, personally, I have had flares of miliaria rubra um, with working out here in Houston, just like um, around the sports bra areas, um, I find that you know they can develop pretty readily. Just where that so those sweat ducts are are being not only me, being occluded and not allowing the proper outflow of, of sweat, but also there's just like a lot of irritation and aggravation from the rubbing of the fabrics and them not breathing very well. Um, so that is a very common scenario for miliaria rubra to arise. More, you know, it's it's one of the more common presentations of miliaria rubra. Um, it also can occur, you know, on the back of people who are bed bound or, um, you know, on bed rest for um, a medical condition or, you know, a lot of women um, during their pregnancy have to, to go on bed rest and maybe laying flat on their back for a prolonged period of time and just not allowing that just not allowing the sweat outflow to, to proceed <laughs> normally and, and they can arise. Very, very itchy and uncomfortable. Then the third type of miliaria is one called miliaria profunda. And that is actually pretty uncommon. It occurs exclusively in, in individuals living in tropical climates who have been experiencing bouts, bouts already of miliaria rubra off and on on an ongoing basis. Miliaria profunda occurs when there is blockage of the sweat duct deeper down in the, in the sweat duct, um, down to the level of where the, the epidermis, the top layer of the skin meets the dermis. So the dermal epidermal junction, that's where, where the blockage occurs. Not only is it blocked, but the sweat kind of starts to leak out into the surrounding deeper layers of the skin and creates an actual, an actual skin colored bump. They are asymptomatic, but they have a, an unusual appearance to them. And the biggest concern with miliaria profunda, while they are asymptomatic, they're not as itchy, they're not itchy like miliaria rubra. The biggest concern with miliaria profunda is that, particularly if a large area is affected, is that you essentially have wiped out your capacity to, to produce, to release eccrine sweat. And eccrine sweat is a very important part of how we cool our bodies. So individuals suffering from miliary profunda or, or a, deeper, a deeper heat rash can actually, um, can actually overheat quite easily and are predisposed to, to overheating. It's a relatively straightforward clinical diagnosis for a dermatologist, a clinician. Very common to see it in the hospital. I've been consulted to see patients in the hospital many times who have this. It's a pretty straightforward diagnosis, but there are a variety of things that 
look like miliaria and are not miliaria. <laughs> so do not self-diagnose if you are battling any type of rash on the body. Always seek the expert opinion of your treating healthcare provider uh, rather than self-diagnosing and treating. That can really be problematic. You know, there are certain types of um, little bacterial infections that can look like this. There are a variety of, of other skin conditions that are common that can look like this. So don't self-diagnose um, and self-treat. Always seek the opinion of your treating healthcare provider. <laughs> But if you have been given a diagnosis of heat rash or miliaria, there, there's really not a whole lot as far as treatment for the actual rash. The major, major thing is prevention. <laughs> um, prevention in the form of getting air conditioning if you don't already have it. I know it can be really expensive. Your air conditioning goes out, you're strapped, that's really a bad situation. Uh, removing yourself from, from the environment that you're in, um, going to a cool place, Hanging out in the grocery store in the freezer section can sometimes be helpful. Um, ensuring adequate ventilation. You know, like I alluded to earlier, it's very popular in a lot of gyms to kind of create, create this sweaty environment. I think people perceive that that they're exercising harder or, or working harder. Maybe they are, I'm not an exercise physiologist. But if anything, they're really increasing the, the body's demand to produce eccrine sweat to cool the body. And uh, if that sweat is, is blocked, you know, you, you can run into the risk of overheating. So making sure that your environment is adequately ventilated, opening a window, a fan can really, really be helpful. If you are bed bound, or you're taking care of someone who is bed bound and they're lying on their back, um, it's very helpful to make sure that uh, the individual is repositioned for a variety of reasons outside of, outside of heat rash. But having them lie on their side and ha just having a, a fan blow on the back can be a very helpful a very helpful measure for keeping the skin cool and dry. Wearing loose fitting clothing, cotton fabrics, also will, will help to, to prevent this from happening. And when you are battling a, a breakout of a heat rash, cool compresses can be helpful on the skin, just, just some damp, cool compresses. Some people find that calamine lotion can be very helpful. However, it is very drying. So it is recommended that you follow that up with an emollient moisturizer. I happen to be a fan of Vanny Cream Light Lotion in this setting. I think it's very nice. It's not heavy, it's not occlusive, but it keeps the skin hydrated and is helpful. It doesn't have any fragrance or additives. Um, I'll list it down below. With a heat rash, you know, you've really thrown a wrench into the normal skin physiology and the cooling mechanisms. The last thing you want to do is go putting a lot of exogenous things on the skin in an effort to, to relieve, relieve the discomfort. Um, particularly soap. Soap has zero role here. Um, you know, you, you have impairment of sweat coming out of the body, so you, you really don't need any soap at this point. It's merely going to dry out the skin and, and cause problems. Um, so soap is not recommended <laughs> in the setting of a heat rash. You want to remove wet clothing. Wet clothing can be even more occlusive. Clothing that is saturated in sweat is occlusive and can subsequently bring about a flare of this. So make sure you take off wet clothing. Uh, if you are drenched in, in sweat, say after a sweaty workout and hot, um, just take a cool shower to rinse the sweat off of the skin. Again, no soap. And uh, just air dry the skin. No toweling, no, no nothing. Just, just let the skin air dry. It will dry on its own. And just letting the air circulate over the skin can really be helpful in, in allowing some of the physiology to get back to where it needs to be. In the situation of miliaria rubra where the spots are really itchy, you wanna try and do your very best to avoid physically scratching them. Physically scratching them actually can, um, you can introduce bacteria into the skin. The skin barrier is impaired there already. You can introduce exo bacteria exogenously uh, from your fingernails and cause a little skin infection, but it's really challenging to resist the temptation to scratch itchy things. 
a recommendation would be to just get a cool compress and lightly pat it on the skin uh, whenever you have the compulsion to scratch because uh, it, it can be quite strong <laughs> and scratching uh, merely exacerbates the impairment of the skin barrier and can predispose to, to skin infections. <laughs> Your treating healthcare provider may elect to prescribe a topical steroid cream uh, for miliaria rubra as well, since they are itchy and a topical steroid can help with the itch and it can help calm down the inflammation in the rubra <laughs> that is leading to the redness and the itch. And so sometimes they can be, that can be helpful um, depending on the location of the body and the area would guide what type of steroid. So, um, you know, that's something to discuss with your treating healthcare provider. Miliaria or heat rash can be incredibly unbearable to cope with. I hope the tips in this video were helpful to you all as far as going over the causes, contributing factors, and helping you understand why, why heat rash occurs and behaviors that you can avoid to, to prevent getting it again. Um, and you know, you, you do the best you can. You can't always control your environment, unfortunately. Uh, you may work in a situation where you don't have AC in your work. It's summer, you know, so some of these tips are going to be harder, but just kind of having an appreciation going in of what it is that is causing it and doing your best to, to take measures like fanning the skin, I think can really be helpful. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.